In Mido 16.0, we've brought some new enhancements to the shader tree, making it easier for you to texture your models. With the inclusion of new icons in the shader tree, automated organization based on your shading model, and auto set layers, it's easy to know what layer is doing what at a glance and set shaders up at record speed. We've also introduced the texture cache, a new way of baking procedural textures to be visible in both the default and advanced viewports to get a higher fidelity look at your models without crunching your machine. So the first thing that we'll be looking at today are some of the enhancements that we've made to the shader tree. The first one that we're going to be looking at is the auto set layers feature. This new feature allows you to automatically set the layer effect of imported images or clips based on the file name. This makes setting up shaders a lot, lot quicker. So to do this, turn on Auto Set Layers by clicking the Auto Set button at the top of your shader tree. Once set, you can open the Clip Browser by clicking the Clip Browser button at the top of the viewport. As you can see, the textures have their layer effects written in the file name. So if I drag this roughness map into my shader, the layer effect is automatically set to roughness. I can do this with all my maps and they'll all automatically be set without any thinking on my part. In addition to this, we've also introduced the ability to automate your layers organization based on the shading model that you're using. So to make sure that your layers interact properly, they need to be in the correct order determined by your shader model to ensure that they're working properly. From where I've just been dragging my textures into the shader tree, I know that my maps are not in the right order. So to fix this, all I need to do is right click on my material and then click organize effects. As you can see, my layers have been reshuffled and I now know that everything is in the right place. Because the organize effects command organizes your layers based on the shading model you're using, it will automatically disable any layers that aren't supported by the shader model. So if I change my normal map to something like vector displacement, and then switch to another shading model like principled, which I know doesn't support vector displacement maps, I can then right click on my material and click organize again. You can see that the vector displacement map has now been put into the omitted folder. So I still have all of my maps, but the ones I don't need can now be omitted on a per shader basis. You may have noticed that we've also introduced opacity and blend mode columns to the shader tree making it easier to manipulate layers without having to dig into your groups. Opacity can easily be changed by clicking and dragging on the number in the opacity column, or by clicking it and then typing a number into the numerical field. Blend modes are changed by clicking in the column and then selecting a blend mode from the menu that appears. Once a blend mode is set, a corresponding icon becomes available in the shader tree. These handy new features mean that you can now see how your layers are interacting with each other without having to open individual layers and look at the properties. If you prefer the old shader tree, you can also hide these columns by right clicking at the top of your shader tree and then unticking the columns that you don't want. Columns can also be rearranged and resized, allowing you to access what you need when you need it. We've also introduced some new icons for groups. Previously, all groups had the same icon regardless of their type. This meant that it could be hard to figure out at a glance what group was doing what and how things were interacting with your model. Now, each group has its own unique icon so you can see what's what at a glance. So if I click on one of my materials and then go into its properties, I can change the group type to something like part. If we look at the shader tree, we can see that the icon is now different because the group type has changed. This makes things a lot easier and allows you to quickly identify what groups you have in your scene. So the last thing that we've introduced to the shader tree is the ability to cache your textures. This is a really cool feature that allows you to bake down your textures while you're working so that they can be visible in the default and advanced viewports. This feature really shines when it comes to procedural textures. So here I'm adding some of Modo's procedural textures to this model. As you can see, the textures appear in the render window, but not in the viewport. However, if I cache them, I'll be able to see my textures in the viewport. To do that, I'm going to select the group that I want to be cached, and then click the Texture Cache Commands button. Once clicked, a few options become available. If you've selected textures that you want to be cached, click the Cache Selected Masks option, but if you want to cache everything in the shader tree, click the Cache All Mask button. In here, you also have the opportunity to save all your cache textures by clicking the Save Cache Textures button. 
Because I've selected a group, I'm going to click the cache selected mouse button. Once clicked, you can see that everything is becoming blocky. This means that my textures are being baked and I'm currently seeing them at their lowest resolution. I also know that my textures are caching because the icon of the group that I selected gains a yellow nib which stays on until the cache is finished. This means that the textures are being baked and once it's gone, the textures are finished baking. You'll also notice that the group's icon has changed and if I expand the group, there's a new folder. This folder contains all the cached materials, so they're easy to access and aren't in the way of any uncached layers. While it's caching, I can also keep tumbling around in the viewport and interact with my model, which is really cool because it allows me to keep working flexibly with my model instead of having to wait for the bake to finish. Okay, so now that my textures have finished baking, you can see that they're now visible in both viewports, not just the render window. If I quickly pause that render window, I can now navigate in my viewport and still view my textures in default mode, without having to have a render going at the same time. Another really cool thing about cache textures is that they're not final, and will continue to update as I make changes to them. However, say I've finalised my textures, but I still want to see them in the viewport while I'm working. I can turn on set texture lock by selecting the cached group, navigating to the texture cache commands window and then enabling texture lock. Once the texture lock is enabled, I can keep editing my textures but any changes will not be brought into the cache. The size of baked renders can also be adjusted in the properties panel of your cache texture groups by selecting the cached group in the shader tree and then going to the properties panel. That's all the features that we'll be looking at today. We hope you enjoy these cool new features in Modo. For more information, including documentation, the user guide and additional tutorials, head over to learn.foundry.com forward slash modo.